Okay, I started by dicing some onions and browning them in a little olive oil. I get them started first. And then I added the ground uh, meat. Um, it needs to be very dry and well drained, so I put it in this first to drain it. And then, uh, okay, I'm transferring it to a plate that has paper towel on it because you want this very dry. It's going to be rolled up in dough, so you don't want any extra moisture or oil on it. And you also want it very cool. Um, so I'm going to spread this out, let it drain a while. I'm going to put another paper towel on top to kind of blot it with. And then I'm going to let it sit and cool. You could certainly make this way ahead of time. And you could cook a lot of it at once and use some for spaghetti and some for chili and some for this dish. Just because one of my viewers... Okay, so I've rolled out my dough and I'm not obviously going to make that now. I will link another video where I made that. Know that you can make a two or three batch dough and keep some in the fridge to pull out for later. Keeping it in the fridge improves the texture of the dough and it makes it easy for something like this when you want to just pull it out. So I'm going to put my meat on that has been cooled and drained. And after that I'm going to put on cheese. I'm going to be using Swiss and cheddar because that's what my boys wanted. Um, you can use any kind of cheese you want. And you can also, you could do this vegetarian if you want. Just skip the meat, use mushrooms, onions, peppers, whatever you want. If you use tomato sauce and make it kind of like pizza, I wouldn't use tomato sauce. I would use um, tomato paste. Anyway, I'm just going to do meat and cheese, and then I'm going to let each person decide um, what kind of topping or dip they want, whether it be mustard or ketchup or what have you. If you wanted to, if everybody liked the same thing, you could put pickles on this. You could put pickle relish, mustard, ketchup, whatever you want. But it's basically like a jelly roll. You just spread this out. I probably have too much meat on this, so I'll take some out use it for something else. And then I'm going to put my cheese right on top. And I'm sure that during this vid you will see some stellar editing skills. Not. Alright, so cheddar cheese. You could also use um, roasted red peppers are really good on stromboli. I've even done peanut butter and jelly stromboli when the kids were little. I've done it with hot dogs and sauerkraut. I mean, you can really do it with whatever you want. Just think of it as a jelly roll and put in whatever toppings you want. You could use spinach. You could probably use any veg you want, I guess. Actually, now that I think of it, I forgot. I'm going to use leave the ends of this without cheese because I'm strange. I prefer it without. So I'll just have the ends without. Now, okay, and on top of that, I'll put the Swiss cheese. And after I get the Swiss cheese laid out, I'll be back. Okay, this is the part that's a little bit tricky where you roll it up. Just start from the bottom. It doesn't matter if you get too much um, topping down towards the inside end, but as you get towards the end that you want um, to be your final, you know, the outside part, you don't want too much on it because you're going to need to seal it. And in fact, we're going to need some water to do that, so I'm going to get that and be right back. Okay, I'm just going to paint the top of this with water so that it can get a little bit sticky as we're rolling. I'll just help glue it together. And you can even go down around the sides if you want a little bit. Doesn't hurt. The ends tend to be more bread than anything else, but some people like me like that, so 
not a big deal. Okay, now you just want to start folding from your inside edge and it's a little tricky to get it going sometimes but once you get it going it's not so bad. I have mine on a sill pat so you can sometimes even use that to help you roll it. You could use parchment paper or saran wrap and get kind of the same effect to just help you pick up that first edge. And then you just sort of keep working it and it's going to feel like it's a little out of control but eventually you will muscle it into where you want. And you don't want it to be really tight but you know so that you rip your dough but you also don't want to be too loose about it. You want it kind of snug. You just keep rolling and rolling, rolling and rolling. And you see how your topping tends to push up towards the top so you just kind of want to tuck it back in there. Show it who's boss. Pretend it's the New World Order. Tell them, get out of my way. Alright, so now the trick is to seal this seam, which is no as easy. You want to pinch it because it, the cheese and stuff will have a tendency to leak out as it's baking if you don't. We're going to be baking this at 375 for oh I'd say 30 to 45 minutes. Kind of depends on your oven, depends on how thick you made it, what you put in it, how cold you, your ingredients are, whether or not they're room temp, a lot of variables. And I can already tell that this is a little long for my pan. So seal up your ends and kind of fold them under a little bit. Seal this up way better than you think you're going to have to. It's probably going to leak anyway, but that's not a big deal. It's not the end of the world. All right, so I'm going to roll this over so that it's seam side down. And in this case, I'm going to put it catty corner because it's so long. I'm going to push this end in a bit. Shape it up and put it on the pan and we're going to let it rise for oh, 20 or 30 minutes. Okay, so this is rested about 30 minutes. I put some water on the top to help make it a little crispier. I'm going to put it in the oven for about um, 30 or 40 minutes at 375. Um, how long it rises, of course, depends on how warm your kitchen is or whatever. Um, if you don't have a sole pat like I do for the bottom, you can always use parchment paper or just put cornmeal on your pan underneath before you put it on the pan. That will help keep it from sticking. We'll be back after it's baked. So out of the oven we come and now we have to transfer to a cooling rack. I had a couple of explosions there because I didn't seal very well. So, like I said, sealing it well is very important. Doesn't mean it won't be delicious, but it is nice to do that. Anyway, I need to get one more cooling rack because this is too big. You want to let it cool for about 20 minutes. And then you can cut into it and enjoy. So there we go. It may not look exciting, but my guys love it, and I hope you do too.